Hi folks, I'm starting off this tutorial previewing live face motion capture in real time here in iClone, following the latest Character Creator 3.4 and iClone 7.9 update. We'll get on to expressions and tools shortly, but first, I want to address the elephant in the room. It's just a fact. Live facial motion capture is noisy. It's twitchy, it's jerky, and in its raw form, it's not usable for production without a lot of hard work to clean it up. And it's not just a problem for live face users. It's a problem all animators using mocap will be familiar with. Well, not anymore. We now have live smoothing on the mocap data as it comes in. Now, you can change the amount of smoothing on different parts, but even with default settings, I hope you can see that the quality of motion has completely changed. What was noisy is now much smoother, more natural, and actually easier to watch as a result. Turning off live smoothing immediately brings back the noise, and whilst the iClown 7.9 update also includes new clip smoothing tools, so you can record raw mocap and smooth it post-capture, for me, the stability provided by live smoothing provides much better live feedback, making producing animation easier and more controllable. Next, some recording with live smoothing applied. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. So in smoothing the animation from the start, it means I have less cleanup to do later. And cleaning up motion capture manually on the timeline can be extremely difficult and time consuming. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Next, another new powerful function with Reillusions Update is Replace functionality. It makes facial motion capture recording multi-track. Previously, you could use the mask panel to blend parts of animation. Now you can replace parts altogether. So you can replace just the brows animation, or the eyes, or anything else without having to keep recording full takes until one turns out right. First, I replace the brows and eyeball animation. With these selected in the mask panel and replace checked, I record over the current clip. And this can be any part of the face. So between blending, which means simply adding animation on parts, as well as now replacing parts, it means you're no longer limited to linear full face recording. Here, I'm replacing just the head animation. So this time the facial animation stays the same. This will really open up facial animation workflow from working on new sequences to correcting old ones, even blending performances from different actors using different facial parts. Now, I've just recorded a new full face clip and I'm speeding up the process of replacing as well as blending parts. This really is something you need to try to really appreciate the implications of how it can change production workflow. But for me, just like live smoothing, the new replace functionality means that I no longer end up in the vicious circle of producing raw mocap then cleaning and fixing for hours before giving up and starting a new mocap take. It means I can correct mocap using mocap itself. And because Reillusion's avatar and animation approach is generic, all animations work on all characters. Replace as well as blending parts provides more opportunities for recycling. Using an animation created on one character on another and then changing it as you wish to fit the new character. Here, after replacing everything and then switching character models, I'm blending some blinks into the animation. Live smoothing and multi-track facial recording are huge steps forward, but there's lots more motion capture functionality to the latest update. Showing now a standard CC3 Plus avatar which has already been updated in Character Creator to include the new X Plus profile. So it has all of the new ARKit facial expressions as well as tongue expressions loaded. So with live face running on the iPhone, I open up Motion Live and start to preview the capture. I set zero pose to calibrate neutral as well as enable live smoothing. Now everyone's capture setup and everyone's environment, including lighting, will be different. And this is why it's worth working with the smooth sliders to see whether higher or lower values provide a better sweet spot. But here, I'll stay with the defaults. Next, I'm opening the Tracking Data Inspector panel, which shows the data in real time as it comes in from the iPhone. This panel has been redesigned to make understanding the data easier. And whilst you can still use the search bar, expressions are now color-coded into groups to give you a clearer idea of where an expression will be in the list. So eyes are red, cheeks yellow, nose green, etc. And as you make an expression, 
the values of the parts comprising the expression will increase in the tracking panel. You'll also notice that the Tracking Data Inspector has a new numerical input field on every channel. This is the new Data Multiplier function, which I'll cover shortly, but first, an overview. Now, data coming from the phone is one thing. How that actually operates on the character itself is another. So here I've opened the new mapping panel, and this will give a perspective on how the whole thing is working, from the phone to the data, to the expressions which the data is activating on the model. The mapping panel interface has also been redesigned to make it easier and faster to access and change the model's facial expressions. It's completely expandable and is laid out logically. So the data is coming from the phone, this is shown in the Tracking Data Inspector, and the mapping panel, which could also be called the retargeting panel since that's what it does, matches the character's expressions to the data as it comes in with the channel control names which are activated by the data on the left, and the model's expressions which are being controlled in the main right-hand panel. So every data channel has an equivalent control name here in the mapping panel. And if an expression is not currently mapped, this will be highlighted here in the control name dropdown. I'm turning off preview for a moment, as well as closing the tracking data inspector, to clarify how the mapping itself works. Though it's important to know that Reillusion's approach means characters are mapped automatically, instantly retargeted so that they work immediately with mocap. But if you want to go further to customize expressions on the model, understanding the process will help. If we take the example of the first expression on the list, Brow Inner Up, you can see that this doesn't appear to be mapped since sliders are at zero. This is because updated avatars are using the ARCIT one-to-one -one profile which connects the data to expressions in the custom section. But with the default profile loaded, you can see that this connects the avatar's default expressions to the data. And you can change these values as well as mix in other expressions and save new profiles if you wish. But let's go back to the ARCIT one-to-one -one profile. Here, control names are mapped to the new expressions which you'll find in the custom section. You'll see that there's a direct one-to-one -one relationship between the control names and the expressions here. Though, of course, you can change that to increase or decrease extents, how far expressions will go, and also to change the expressions themselves by using different combinations. So, taking the example of mouth smile left, if I want to change that expression from what I'm provided with automatically, I can simply change its values and add in elements of other expressions to produce something which I think will be better for animation. And this is not limited to using one expression set. I can also blend in default expressions, and as long as I save the profile, I can reuse these custom settings and blends on any model. So, for example here, if I want to make the upper lip rise up when the jaw opens, I simply add mouth shrug upper to the original preset jaw open expression. Now, as I said, mapping is automatic, so you don't have to do this. But if you want to engage the tongue with live face, you do need to make a few adjustments. The tongue is not set up automatically. This is because, in truth, iPhone tongue animation is a gimmick. It's a one-shot deal with a single possible expression. And unless you're familiar with using it, you may find that it pops out randomly and can mess up your animations. So Reillusion have left the tongue unmapped so that you can set it up if you wish. The new tongue expressions are towards the bottom of the custom panel, and to set the tongue up, it will help if you preview the live mocap at the same time. So here, with my mouth open and my tongue out, I adjust the shape and extents of the tongue using the sliders. Now here I'm making what is the standard ARCID tongue expression, but you could customise the expression so that when you put your own tongue out, the tongue on the model will do something else. And the reason why, instead of a single tongue expression for one-to-one -one mapping, there are a number of different tongue expressions, is for blending to allow you to define your own variations, as well as to provide many more animation opportunities using iClone's other animation tools. But once you've set up the tongue, as well as customised expressions as you wish, it's important to remember to save your current profile. I hope this part of the tutorial has given you an overview of how the mocap approach works, from the original phone data through to expressions mapping, and how to change the mapping to make a new expression or to modify an existing one. You've seen how to set up the tongue from scratch so that the expression which fires along with the phone data does what you want it to. And you've seen how the data relates to expressions, how making a particular face drives the different expression channels. 
Now I want to go back to data because the new multiplier function is key to getting the best out of facial mocap. I've shown you how to adjust expressions in mapping and the normal workflow for retargeting mocap is indeed to change expression values to make the best of the data as it comes in. So if the smile from mocap is weak in the data, you can make the smile bigger in mapping. That's one way to do it, but it's not ideal since really mapping should be about making the expressions you want to see on the model at their natural extents, not about compensating for data. I'm looking at the data closely here as I make particular expressions, and I know that the maximum data extent is a value of 1. But as I keep testing, it becomes really obvious that many expressions are simply not firing to that extent, even when I make extreme expressions. Basically, the data does not accurately reflect what I'm doing with my face. Now, I've been working with iPhone data since the start, and I know that data quality is variable depending on many factors. Not least the user's face, the lighting, the PC connection, and lots more. But regardless of this variability, I want to make the data better so that it does more accurately reflect what I'm doing with my face. And I want to do that without having to make extreme distorted expressions in mapping to compensate for data which is too weak or which is firing so strongly that the slightest motion produces maximum extent. So the new tracking data multiplier function allows you to increase or decrease the data value on each expression channel as it comes in. You should always set zero poles before using the multiplier to ensure that expression values are working from zero. After that, it's a matter of pulling faces and checking the data values to see if they're too weak, not expressive enough, or too strong and firing too quickly. Changing the multiplier value on a channel will change the strength of the signal. It's that simple. And whilst it can take time, depending on how accurately you want expressions to work, it's well worth doing because with every adjustment, you're improving mocap quality. And again, this means less time spent cleaning up data after recording. Now, multiplier profiles, just like mapping profiles, are saved as JSON files, and you can save and load these at any point. My recommendation would be to make an average profile initially by averaging values on a number of different models, and then customizing it for particular models which you want to use for production. This approach is really about balancing the data for the current user and the current capture setup. It's also about balancing the data for individual character models, since depending on relative feature positions, how high the eyebrows are by default, or how curved the mouth is by default, inevitably the same data values will affect different characters in different ways. So if you really want the best mocap for a particular model, it's worth fine-tuning the data to get the best results. And whilst the rule of one, that expression values should reach one when the user is at maximum expression extent, is a useful guide, the most important thing is whether the model is working as well as it possibly can. There's huge potential for customization using the new tracking data multiplier, as well as with mapping expressions. And with all of these balancing tools, it's easy to overlook that as well as the new smooth panel for live smoothing and the mask panel for control and recording, you also have a strength panel which can be used to quickly adjust the strength of expressions either globally or in parts. If you're on a deadline and you just need to animate quickly, don't forget to use the strength panel. Think of it as a mini multiplier as this can give a surprising degree of control even without adjusting the data on individual channels. Before finishing off with new timeline functions, it's worth a quick recap on the new interfaces, from live face in motion live through to expression mapping and tracking data. This is probably the most comprehensive and controllable iPhone mocap solution available today. You can use it quickly and simply, or you can fine tune everything to produce better results. So finally, here with iClone's timeline open, I'm recording a short clip of raw mocap without live smoothing. As you can see, it's as if we're back at the start of this tutorial with noisy, twitchy, glitchy motion capture. Now, despite the great new expressions, the quality of motion, because of the noise and glitches, is just not polished enough for production. And again, this is something you can see all the time. Just search iPhone mocap on YouTube and try to find a really smooth, polished example. And if we look at this model in wireframe, it's even clearer how the quality of motion is unnatural. It's constantly disturbed, whereas this baby should really be relaxed.
Live smoothing would solve this, but iClone 7.9 now includes new functions, including smoothing functions, which can be applied directly on the clip on the timeline. The new functions are set speed, which provides numerical retiming of clips as an alternative to the usual direct drag speed control available from the timeline menu, as well as smooth, which provides part-based smoothing on the selected clip based on averaging data. Generally, this has a stronger effect than live smoothing when used on equivalent values, and it does provide an alternative quality of smoothing. Next, we have the new down sample function, which is the same approach implemented for live smoothing. Again, it's part based, but unlike smooth, down sample reduces the noise by dropping frames. It makes the animation simpler, yet maintains the extents of those frames which remain. Personally, I prefer this smoothing since it's more accurate, but both methods are completely valid and can be used individually as well as together, and mixed on parts, depending on the type of smoothing you want to achieve. Now, these are new functions available from the clip's right-click menu, but I'll finish off with something which I expect will seem obvious to many experienced iClone users, and something which, just like all the new tools, can really help save time when producing animations. This function isn't new at all, but along with the benefit of the new tools, it's particularly worth considering if you have a lot of animation to produce. Let's say you have a mocap clip like this, and you want to reuse it for something else. Why not simply break the clip into useful phrases of motion? Then you can switch them around. You can also save them individually as smiling, frowning, whatever, and then reuse them to make new sequences for different models. Now, I'll be covering a lot more timeline editing in the final tutorial in this series, where I'll cover iClone 7.9's brilliant new Aculix plugin for lip sync as well as using the new expressions with the latest face puppet and face key functionality, and new workflows to make producing animation even faster and more controllable. Thanks for watching.